Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 17 of Direwolf20's Fortress Craft Evolved series. Starting off this episode by collecting ingots out of my hoppers. I've got large amounts of them, obviously, and yeah, good times are to be had. So I've uh, spent a little time between this episode and last one. I went exploring around some of the cold caverns and stuff. So I want to show you guys what I've discovered and a couple other things uh, that are going on today. So let's slow myself down here as we approach the bottom of this deep, dark cave. So you remember last episode, I uh, set up a second array of smelting here. Um, pretty excited about that because every time I pop down here, I've just got a massive amount of tier two ores. Uh, in theory, if I don't come down here for a while, we should be able to store 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 of each tier two ore smelted, um, backlogged before I have to clear it out. So not too shabby. You can also see on my hotbar there, I've got about 2,300 titanium. Nice, 3,000 nickel and 4,200 gold. Believe it or not, I mean, it's not a bad amount, but I mean, that can very quickly be not enough. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so what have I been doing? I went exploring a little bit. Actually, no, it's not down here. It's up here. Let's go up here. So one of the things I was looking for were crystals. And if you check in my inventory here, you'll see I've got new types of crystals that you guys probably haven't seen before. So we already found diamond crystals, these guys. I've since found emerald, ruby, and sapphire. That's the order in which you'll find them um, going down. So um, I found some emerald a little bit above the cold caverns. Rubies are like in and a little bit below the cold caverns and sapphire is even further down. And I've only gotten one sapphire. So the way I've been doing this is I get out my handy ore scanner here and ping for air. Ta-da! And you'll find empty caverns this way. So by pinging for air, that's pretty much your, your best bet for finding open air spaces. And that's how I found my way down this path. And if we look, whoa, I found a really large cave. And you can see the um, crystals hanging out down there. So let's try and pop down without dying. Nice. And uh, let's pop our way over to there. Nice. Here we go. Some sapphire, I believe that is. Yeah. So I've already analyzed these in my um, research area back home. Definitely want to do that. You'll get yourself some research points as well as uh, unlocking some things that'll be useful for you later down the line. So uh, finding open caverns like this, very much useful. Very, very much useful. And I'm guessing that this is biomass? Yeah. Not a terribly large vein, but I've seen smaller. Let me turn on my headlamp for you all too, because now that the crystals are gone, it's dark. Yeah. So, plenty of cool stuff to be found downstairs in these open caverns. And as you can also see, I did just recharge Arthur before I started recording, so hopefully... As you can see, these caverns go pretty far down. Um, some of these caverns are really large. Let me throw that light. I can't even see the bottom. <laughs> That's how ridiculously deep it is. Um, so, I mean, yeah, big. Um, I kind of want to make sure that I don't lose my way out of here. But I wouldn't mind doing just a little touch of exploring right now and seeing what all I can find. And again, having a little bit of grapple foo definitely helps with this. Let's make sure that we've got this crystal. I want to snag all the sapphires I can because these things are actually really useful and I'll show you what they're used for in a moment here um, but meanwhile I just want to snag them all and let you guys check out the awesomeness of these really deep caverns because they are really cool looking I mean the crystals give off a significant amount of light so obviously removing them makes it darker but I've got my headlamp on and it still drains a pretty good amount of energy like look at my headlamps or look at my energy use when the headlamp was on high so I'm gonna try here It also is helpful to keep it a little bit dark so that you can easily find where the crystals are because think about huge amounts of light, right? So that's cool. Another good trick, by the way, as you're exploring, if you do find yourself getting lost, hit K to activate your hollow base. 
and it should give you a pretty good indication of how to get back to your stuff. Oh, look, there's all my stuff. Thanks, Hollow Base. Very cool. All right, so, wow, all of a sudden very dark again. Let's get the lights on here. So obviously there's a few glowy type things. Another extremely deep cavern. There is a tier four set of ores. However, I wanna say that they're not really imp implemented yet. So that's gold over there, that's nickel. So we're not quite deep enough to get to tier four ores. We're still in the tier two, tier three area because there's biomass here. So that's definitely an indication of the tier three height level. Um, I don't think that tier four is completely implemented yet. And frankly, I just want to be a little bit careful because I don't want to die down here. That would not be ideal. I want to make my way down. That's my little thing that I made. Arthur, how are you doing on power, buddy? I'm over here. He doesn't want to tell me at the moment. There he is. Three of my 10x store. Yeah, that's cool. How much power do you got in you? Come on. Yeah, getting there. I don't want to explore too much further. Because once he runs out of power, things start to get dangerous. So just another quick look around. As you can see, these caves really do kind of go deep. <laughs> I don't want to jump down that. That is literally an abyss. That is huge. Um, these are definitely the toxic caverns because you can see the, the toxic gas all over the place. Wow. The author of this game, by the way, um, has told me once or twice that some of his cave systems um, are larger than the entire world height of Minecraft worlds. So I think the Minecraft world height limit, yeah. This this cave is probably taller than the Minecraft world height. Just think about that for a minute. So pretty big. I will explore that at some point. But for now, I want to explore getting back to my base and not dying. That sounds like a lot more fun to me. Come on, gravel foo, don't fail me now. There we go. I didn't really do a good job of building up this platform. Let's get to the top of the platform that I did build up, sort of. There we go. Now I should be able to grapple up this thing pretty well. I should make this a wider platform here so that when I do grapple up it, I don't have a one block wide thing to get up on. That should be good. So I might go exploring more later and see if I can't find anything cool. Like I said, there is a fourth tier of ores, but I want to say it's not 100% implemented yet. Let's go check out... Oh, progression, you smelted 50,000 ingots. Nice. That's a lot of ingots. Um, speaking of, we've got almost 100 in each of these hoppers, so that's almost 200 of each tier 2 ore. Awesome. Let's go back upstairs. So back up into the cold caverns, and let's check out how you're doing. You've got one more recombined organic matter for me. Thank you very much. Refill the cryo hopper, and you've got about, uh, about two minutes left before you make another one, but that's okay. He's got plenty to do. We'll let him do his thing and grapple our way up top. So these crystals, uh, like I mentioned, are pretty darn useful. And I'll show you what they're used for in a moment here, once we get up to the top. Whoosh. Oh boy, we're getting attacked. Wow, we're really getting attacked. Holy cow. My CPH health is dropping so fast that that's not good. We're going to need more defenses here. So it looks like the critters flew away because... Uh, they won. <laughs> I knew I was under attack. I didn't know I was under attack that badly. Wowzer. That's that's some aggressive stuff going on there. So, Arthur, you recharge for me. Energy reappropriation in progress. Very much appreciated. I should probably work on defenses a little bit this episode. Yeah, this guy's on fire. That's not good. 
Not the end of the world, though. Just gonna check to see if there's any other goodies laying around for me. Nope. I collected everything. Definitely look around, because sometimes there's pristine stuff laying on the ground after an attack like that, and it's nice to get your hands on. So I'll just put away all this junk, and we'll take a look at what crystals can do for us, because it's cool. Um, over here we can check out our crafting guy, and I believe it's under power that we'll find access to some of the focusing crystals. Diamond focusing lenses, which require one diamond. Um, boost the power speed of your lasers by 15%. Emerald is up to 30. And if we go over to our recipes here, we can check out Ruby, which boosts it by 50, and Sapphire, which boosts it by 90. So if you use Sapphire focusing lenses, you can almost double the amount of power transmitted in your lasers. Um, so if we come over here to our blue laser, for example, you'll notice there's a lens slot here. So right now, his average transfer per second, his maximum is 40. If we were to snag a sapphire focusing lens, we could pop one in there, and now his maximum transfer is 76. How cool is that? To get this out of here, by the way, open up your inventory and just drag it out. And ooh, cool, I did get something useful. I've got a pristine stinger. Cool. There we go, nice. Okay, so pristine stinger there, that looks good. So yeah, these focusing lenses, very useful when you wanna start transferring more power at a higher rate. By the way, I've been researching Ultimate Power Grid. As you can see, I've been doing a lot with copper and tin. Haven't really started too much on the titanium ones, but we'll see. I also kind of expanded this system a little bit, try and speed it up even more. Eh, it's not doing too bad. Speaking of, let's put nine of those, nine of those, and three of those, and that'll all get that running again. So what should I do today? Should I work on base defense, or should we look at... I, I kind of want to try out quarries, because I've never actually used these things. Um, let's take a look. Geological Surveyor, research that guy, and Basic Quarry returns all resources found while excavating the shaft. Nice. Um, power required 250. Sounds like a lot. So let's take a look here. Um, that would probably be under this tab. So I definitely want to do the Geological Surveyor. We're going to want one of those. We need Emerald Crystals, Copper Housing, and Basic PCB. So Copper Housing requires some Copper Plates. Okay. Let's get some of these things together, and then we'll come back. All right, guys, just doing a little bit of research here, just stuff I've never gotten around to researching, mostly because I'm trying to figure out what I need to craft the quarry. There's one unknown material listed there. I have no idea what it is. Um, Mark IV. Okay, I did figure out that. That's the Mark III storage component. I made one of those thinking that's what it was, and I was right. Um, so remember last episode we said what's the Mark IV battery component need? Nine Mark III's to build one of these. No, nine Mark III's build nine Mark IV's. Okay, well that's not terrible. That should be totally doable. Yeah, okay. That's not cool. That's not bad. So we need 27 in total. So we need three sets. We need 27 Mark III's, which require a not insane amount of tier two ores but a pretty close to insane amount of tier two ores so maybe a little over a thousand titanium right now closer to two thousand probably yeah 1800 ish yeah maybe close to two thousand all right let's see the one thing i haven't figured out yet though is i do really want to try out the quarries because i haven't played with them and i know it's going to make me do things that i have yet to do but yeah Still don't know what a quarry needs. So let me come back in a minute and figure that out. All right, guys, we're back. I did more exploring, and I found a yellow crystal that I've never found before. And I'm thinking this might be what's needed for the quarry. It is an unknown block, so I'm hoping I'm correct in this. I'm going to snag a few of these guys and see what happens. I am way deep down in these cold caverns. I'm at negative 600 at the moment, and I'm really nervous because I'm, like, trying my darndest to probably turn on the headlamp for you guys. But... I don't want to use my headlamp too much because I want to conserve power, so I'm not going to record too much down here just because it is really using up a lot of my power reserves just to be down here. So we'll come back in a few. This direction I see lamps that I placed, so I know this is the way out. All right, cool. I made it back alive, and I'm shocked. 
that I did so. But I actually did, in my opinion, a pretty good job of tracking where I was going using torches. As you can see, I have uh, used about a decent chunk of my coal reserves. So that's a pretty good indication of how much time I spent down there. Um, I would say my also all my tier three, tier two hoppers were pretty much full. So I was probably down there for like a good half an hour running around. But now I want to analyze this bad boy. What do we got? Unknown material. Ready to process it? Topaz crystal. Okay, cool. Nice. Uh, that gives me access to the topaz focusing lens, which is a 150% power increase. Also cool. Uh, let's see if that's the type of crystal that I need for a basic quarry. Oh, it's not. Brutal. Wow, that stinks. All right, so now I really don't know what it is. Let me look around some more. All right, guys, found another unknown block. I am now at negative 672. I picked up sugar light crystals. Okay, that's cool. Neat. So I've got now, how many of these things? Where did you go? There's the topaz that I collected earlier. You can see I've tried to organize my inventory. Didn't do too great. There it is, unknown material. So I've got two of them. I'm gonna look around and see if I can't find just a few more down here before I head back up, because this is so deep underground that, you know, I feel like while I'm here, I should grab what I can. All right, be right back. All right, guys, negative 726. Kind of dug straight down into a thing, pinged for air, and found what looks to be yet another really decent sized cavern, maybe. Uh, there is this stuff, which is hardened resin. Okay. Definitely some more of that sugar light crystal, I think it is. Gonna explore a little bit and then head back to the base. Wish me luck. Because I am not sure how well I'm going to do with this. Oh, wow, there's actually a decent amount of sugar light down here. That's cool. Yeah, I'm not going to go too far, but I'm definitely going to hang out and mark where my exit is with a couple torches like that. That should be a really good indication that my exit's right there. Cool. All right. Back in a few once I've harvested a bit of these crystals, because I bet these are even better than topaz. Nice. All right, that's nice and dark. All right, back in the middle. Yeah, so I died, but luckily I knew pretty good where my corpse was, and now I am alive once again. Hooray! So I got all my stuff back. I was nervous. I really was. Dying down here, not an ideal situation to be in for sure. Um, by the way, reminder, when you're in the toxic caverns, you have to craft yourself an extra toxic particle filter because reasons. So keep that in mind. All right. Um... I think I got all my stuff, pretty sure I did. Let me just headlamp this and make sure there's no items laying around near where my corpse was. I think They all seem to stay really close to where your corpse was. It's not like they fly all over the place. So we're in pretty good shape. All right, now I know how to get out of here, so let's do so. All right, so this should be my path out of here. So this is kind of how I navigated down to where I was. That should be good. So um, there was a hole right next to that pillar that I pulled up. That's where I dug down to like Y 700-ish. And this is the thing I showed you earlier that leads up to my gold area. Come on, grapple your way up there, Dyer. This will be good. Once I get onto this platform, I'm okay. But it is easy to derp up. Oh, you're grappling. Wrong turn. I hope you guys are enjoying watching me derp up my grappling. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss your spot, it is easy to mess up. All right, where's my exit out of here? There we go. And this leads back to my gold area, so I will meet you guys back at the base, and hopefully this is what I need to make a quarry. 
So let's research our unknown material. Boom, sugar light crystal. Let's go over here. Is that what I need to make a quarry? Survey says, yes, I only need five of them, which is even cooler. Uh, all right, nice. So quarry is within reach. Uh, as you can see, I made a macerator and a geological surveyor here. I wasn't sure if that was maybe the item. Maybe it's like a use that to upgrade the quarry type of deal, but no, that's it. So that's cool. All right. Um, and by the way, does that mean I can now make sugar light focusing lens? 200% power increase? Nice. So that doesn't mean double. That means 200% more power. So a tier two laser would go from 40 to 120. That is awesome. Cool. All right. So I guess I just need a bunch of high energy composite fuel. I need like 50 of those, give or take. So let's go here to this tab. Um, so we're going to need 50 empty fuel canisters. So I'll do one, two, one, two, and then clear all this stuff that I don't need to have at the moment. And empty fuel canisters can go here. And I'll bring this down to where I'm processing all the high energy fuel stuff. And I'll just turn these 50 into you know what. So. This is my remove only. This should be pretty quick to operate because we should have plenty of juice. Yeah, so it's only gonna take a few seconds for each of these. But we have 50, so this will probably take about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll be back in a few once I've processed these. So I'm here trying to keep these things running. I could throw a tier three here, but I just wanna try putting a sapphire lens in. Nice, look at that. It's transferring a huge amount of power now, 76 instead of 40. So that should probably be draining pretty quickly from these battery banks, but this thing produces so much power, it's all good. So that should be keeping this thing running. I would probably want, yeah, this is the one that has the lens in it, right? Nice. And that's keeping this thing going while it's running. I'm going to remove that lens because we don't, it's, it's rare that we're going to have to produce this many composite fuels all at once, but for the quarry, yeah. As a matter of fact, crafting. I think I'm gonna go with a sugar light one. I could also, well, yeah, I wanna try it out. Just because I've never used these high tier focus lenses before, I really wanna check them out. Just, I mean, it's neat, number one. But uh, this thing actually uses 100 power per second, the that, so it's actually still not getting enough at 74. But if I drop this guy in there, that should be transferring up to 120, a little over 100. And now this thing is hopefully getting what he needs. I'm gonna boost this up a little bit. He may not even be able to transfer fast enough. Wow, nice. That's kind of cool. All right, back in a minute. Okie dokie, I think we've got 48 of these things, which means we can make our quarry. Nice. Just gonna need, I believe, a large amount of iron gears, and then we'll be good. So let's see. Mining, basic quarry, 75 iron gears. It seems like a lot, but that's okay. I should be able to pull that off pretty quickly. Just remember you make five at a time. Cool. So that means Quarry is ready to go. Nice. All right, so let's check it out. Um, I'm gonna put these guys on the F7 line. So I want the geological surveyor as well. This is the macerator, which we'll probably wanna play with maybe next episode. Here's your quarry. Yeah, we'll put that on four actually. And where's my geological surveyor? Should be around here, there it is. Nice. All right, so what I'm thinking is, let's go over here-ish and see what would happen if I placed a geological surveyor like here. So this requires power. So let's pop one of these dudes down. I don't know how much power he needs, Yeah, I can see that. That's cool. So it's giving you an idea of how much is down there. So it's at depth 458 meters. Let's pump some more juice into that bad boy. So he doesn't need that much power. I can do this manually for now. And he should be giving us an idea of how much ore is beneath him. Nice. 
I don't know how far down he goes, but we're already a thousand blocks down. Search depth is unlimited. So I mean a thousand blocks, that's pretty darn good. So there's 220,000 smeltable ore in this uh, geological surveyor's area, 330,000 coal, and 138,000 non-ore. Let me write those down. All right, so I thought that I found a lot of ore last time, but this guy's reached about a depth of a little over a thousand, and now he's got 1.16 million smeltable ore, 69,000 coal, and 112,000 non-ore. So let me also write that down. That's a lot. Um, yeah, I'm thinking this might be a good spot for a quarry. All right, yeah, so this guy's getting close to a thousand here, and I'm not having quite as much luck with the ores. I mean, not terrible, but, you know, not 1.16 million ores either. So I feel like this is a nice place to plant my quarry. So this is definitely where it was. Now, I've, like I said, never used the quarry before. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how this works. Uh, please attach door chopper. This should contain red and white chevrons. Please attach a storage chopper. Okay. Um, storage chopper here. Cannot locate input hopper. Oh, chevrons. All right, maybe I should read the help guide on this thing. Um, yes. So the quarry size is nine by nine. Its depth is unlimited. It costs 150 power per cube mined. Uh, let's see, maximum recharge rate is a thousand per second. So that's a lot of power. Five cubic meters per second is the max. Okay. Interesting. Red and white chevrons. I don't know what that means. So let's see if we can figure that out, shall we? Red and white chevrons. Legitimately, no idea what that is. I'm gonna look at my player crafting window too. And just, oh, chevron sign, okay. Um, interesting. Let's try it out. Put about 10 of them in there. Or maybe a dozen each. Oh, these are red and white. Okay, that makes sense. I get it now. So we'll set this machine to add only. Corey currently constructing edge warning. Safety first. Okay, let's give him some power. And I want to make sure that this works. Oh, that's cool. So he is definitely going to need more of those. Crafting. Neat. All right. Interesting. So that is going to mine there then. With this, I guess, being the center. I really wanted this to be the center though, right? Because this is where my geological surveyor came back as being cool. So I might need to move this back a little bit. Let's just see what the surveyor says is underneath here now. We'll be right back once this runs. All right. Dumped a bunch of power in here. Let's see what we've got. Oh. Hello. We're only at a depth of 700 and we've got almost 2 million smeltable ore. Okie dokie then. I'm going to call this a happy accident because that's even more ore <laughs> than I expected from before. Like double. Nice. I have no idea if that's considered a lot, but 2 million ore seems like a lot to me. Uh, so I guess that's a good spot for a quarry, huh? I'm going to have to ask the developer at some point if that's like considered a lot or if like 5 million is a good amount. Because 2 million seems like a good amount to me. So, oh, we're up to 3 million. Oh, heavens. That's pretty awesome. I like everything about that. Cool. All right. Um, so I'm going to remove these guys. We don't really need them anymore. And I guess that's the point at which it's going to start quarrying. 
So now what do you have to say to you for yourself? Press E to confirm quarry position. Works for me. All right, power and... Oh, hello, that's cool. Look at that, that is, whoa. I've not seen this before. So there's not enough power available at the moment, obviously. So let's craft some things. I'm going to want a decent amount of power transfer to go up to this thing. And obviously, you know, I've got a lot of stuff coming in by way of my ores and whatnot, but I just want to check this out because it's cool. Um, let's make ourselves a couple. Whew, do I want to go with Mark Threes? That might be a little bit crazy, but let's do it. I'm going to make a couple of these guys. So the Mark III power energy transmitters. I don't even know how much they can transfer. I've literally never used these before. Can transfer um, 320 power per second. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, I didn't need more than one or two of these, but that's okay. I've got the resources for it, as you can see. So what I'm thinking I might do is, on top of this thing... Could place one of these dudes, right? And this thing should quickly start filling up with power. Yeah, look at him go. Nice. All right. And then we're going to want to find a nice power transfer beam rate to go up this. So let's do you going up. Cool. Very excited to be using this because I've never used it before. And we'll beam it off in this direction, right? So... I think we want to beam it directly into this thing. So this looks like the line to go up. Is this looking good? One higher. Now we're talking. And this guy... Is this about where I want to be? One lower. Yeah. Whoa, look at that awesomeness. Dude, we are crushing it. Nice. Look at him go. That is cool. All right. So the only downside-ish to this awesome contraption, and wow, that is really neat looking, um, is that all the ore we get is not all we get. We also get the dirt and the snow and all the other good stuff that comes out of here. So that's part of the reason that we're going to want to make use of the macerator. Because this will give us a reason to use the macerator. Um, energy dependent machine that can crush almost every kind of block into oblivion and rare occasions useful ore will be found. Um, cool. So I wouldn't mind, can I rotate you? Yeah, that's what I want. And I wouldn't mind having you here. Okay, that's good. Man, this thing is going to drain every ounce of power I've got. Cool. So this should be filling up all output hoppers full or locked. Makes sense. So that means this thing should be building up power internally now. Or at least it will be once this thing's internal buffer fills. And then we can try out our macerator. Sweet. 
add only. Okay. Don't have any idea what kind of power needs this thing has, but he's apparently getting all he needs now because he's at full power. Remove only. So machines can add to you. Remove this thing, I would think, can work now. I don't know if he... Oh, maybe he needs to be... As you can tell, I'm not 100% sure as to how this works. Maybe it's got to be something like that. All right, guys. Well, the bad news is that we are at wrapping up point for the episode. So what I'll do, I might need a better storage hopper. But what I think I'm going to do is if this doesn't work, I'm going to wrap up the episode here, play with the macerator a little bit off camera between this episode and next and see what I can't figure out with it. And this was more just like a for fun build, just to check out macerators and quarries and all that good stuff. And I think we'll be in good shape when we come back next episode. I'm going to... Uh, start just poking around with some other cool gadgets and stuff. Now that we've got access to some really good power because we've got such a large amount of tier 2 ores incoming, just wanted to kind of play with this machine and figure out how he works. And I think he's pretty neat. So let's set this to add only, remove only, and macerator. Go. Do a thing, macerator. Alright, if that doesn't work, I don't know what to tell you. So we'll come back next time. We will play around with more of this cool stuff and have a bunch of fun with it. All right, guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode of Fortress Craft Evolved. This quarry is cool looking. Take it easy.